confronting and controlling thoughts according to the fathers of the Philokalia, Philokalia by Anthony M. Canaris. According to the fathers of the Philokalia, Light and Light Publishing. Table of Contents. The intellect or nous and orthodox spirituality. Nous, mind, is a spiritual vision. Nous as a hegemonicon or helm. The nous, intellect, is not present in everyone. The intellect is a gift that saves the soul. The purified intellect is the spiritual eye. More comments by church, church fathers on the intellect. St. Paul on the law of the mind and the law of the flesh. Descend with the mind into the heart. A union of mind and heart. Descending with the mind into the heart through, through the Jesus prayer. More on descending with the mind into the heart. A head in the heart faith. When we think we are praying, the journey within, the heart, the faculties of the heart. The heart is the command center, the conscious mind, the unconscious heart, the struggle between the conscious mind and unconscious heart. Fill the vacuum with God. The importance of the heart. My son, give me your heart. The heart is the center of our being. Logosmos, or thought precursor of passions. The strategy of the evil one. How Satan uses logos me to steal our prayers. You are where your mind is. The greatest kind of love. The example of Jesus. You are what your thoughts make you. Thoughts are powerful. So, at this note, there's more here, I guess, to read but I, I in the table of contents. But I want to stop and one say a good book that I would recommend is a book called Our Thoughts Determine Our Lives. Um, and I can do a little review on that book. And I want to mention uh, the Jesus Prayer and actually a fellow, um, a colleague, and physician friend of mine uh, made mention. Um, she was coming from a secular perspective, but talking about how re thought replacement, not just thought blocking, but thought replacement and um, repetition of a mantra could be helpful. It's found research has shown um, when they do scans or imaging of the brain, um, actual changes in the mind um, in a helpful, positive way. Um, so when there's mention of the Jesus prayer, um, there are many benefits from that, um, and the repetition of that particular prayer as taught in the Orthodox tradition. If you'd like to learn more about that, there is, um, The Way of the Pilgrim, which is a great book and introduction. Many, many books have been written on the Jesus Prayer, and I can go into that more at a later time. 4,000 thoughts each day. The mind is a battlefield. The Anessis formula for wealth. If you think you are beaten, you are. Throw your mind over the bar first. A tranquil mind is health for the body. Killed by 30 years of thought. I live in my mind. What Jesus said about thoughts. Out of thought grows speech and action. Whence comes the Logos me? So to go a little bit into Logos me, I'd like to say um, just very, very briefly um, giving uh, what that is, giving an explanation of their like seeds that are planted into the mind or um, noose, the core of our beings that are invasive and will bring forth weeds or bring forth plants that bear rotten fruit. Uh, I know that that's a very shallow explanation, but they are actually an orthodox tradition uh, implanted into our minds. It's interesting, um, without going on a tangent, how secular psycho psychology um, and psychiatry and thoughts about our thinking, uh, you cannot really ever quantify a mental state. It's just an impossibility to do such a thing. And um, to suggest that all these things emanate from within us as a byproduct of our neurobiology, I think is, um, in my opinion, a fallacious way of thinking. 
I'm not going to try to somehow scientifically validify and prove that, but I'm not a hard materialist. Actually, that's something I'm fighting against. And I am a person who is spiritual in my very nature and makeup and made in the image of God. So when our thoughts are assailed by dark forces, there are seeds that are implanted, which you would say negative thinking. And I think every human being on the face of this earth, it would be impossible to say that you have not experienced those thoughts. Um, and then there's a lot that goes along with nourishing and cultivating um, those thoughts and causing them to grow and turn into something that can actually become um, thought, uh, action or, um, um, yeah. So that's just the gist of that. And I've probably really oversimplified it, but I just wanted to touch on a little bit about the Logos Me because I think it's very important um, to this, the life and the spirit and spiritual development, you're going to find, um, interesting things. If you look at like something like Tibetan Buddhism or Buddhism in general, um, also a lot about, um, similar concepts. Um, so I'm just also throwing that out there, but let's stick with this for now. Um, so where are we? Whence come the Logos me? The set the mind of the flesh is death. To set the mind on the flesh is death. Have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ yields the wisdom of God. Thinking makes it so. The mind is a computer. Garbage in, garbage out. What do you think of yourself? How should I think of myself? A critique on the power of positive thinking. Logos me are thoughts, good and bad. The invisible struggle, contamination of the soul, the process of sin through the mind. A caged enemy, how to resist the Logos me. Victory can be ours, the net on the windows of the Temple of Solomon. A spiritual filtering system, more spiritual filters, Salah. Post a guard at the gate, guard the senses, don't build an airport, ancient Egypt, close the door. Learn to say no, the importance of saying no. Why so much moral decay? Men of the Bible, saying no is a byproduct, repentance is saying no. The exorcisms and baptism, not no to sin. The prince and the harlot, don't leave food around for the flies, always be on patrol. Why all the emphasis on watchfulness? Close the door of your cell. Scrutinize yourself daily. Cling to the Lord in prayer. Four steps to lift the mind to heaven. Watch and pray. Destroy Logosmi at their first appearance. Concentrate on the scattered intellect through the thought of death and remembrance of Jesus. Additional counsels on coping with Logosmi. Put on the whole armor of God. Inner pollution. Know thyself through prayerful introspection. Constant weeding of harmful Logosmi. Changing channels, counter speaking, ama syncletica, Marcarios on speak on counter speaking, an example of counter speaking to Satan. Jesus prayer gathers the scattered mind. A traffic policeman on duty, fasten the mind on Jesus. Bind the mind with one thought. <clears throat> How the Jesus prayer helps us resist logos me. Evil thoughts. It is not in our power to uproot Logos me. Prayer and vigilance. A mental shampoo. When thoughts are concealed, they exert power over us. Why are you still carrying her? Empty your mind of sinful thoughts. Fill your mind with God. A Japanese custom. Holy Logos me. Tolstoy. <clears throat> Final thoughts from the Church Fathers on Logos me. The important part of the house. The intellect or noose in orthodox spirituality. Orthodox spirituality places great emphasis on the noose or mind and the thoughts, logos me, that the mind produces. It does so because everything we do begins in the noose or mind. With thoughts, logos me, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We read in Proverbs. So let's begin our study of confronting and controlling thoughts according to the fathers, the Philokalia, with a brief study. First, the noose mind, then the heart, and then move on to the thoughts, logos me, that proceed from the mind and the heart, and how the Philokalia counsels us to confront and control them. 
Most of the fathers will be consulting now on this subject are from the Philokelia, uh, or Philokelia. Philokelia, as you may know, means love of the beautiful. It is an anthology of spiritual writings by the church fathers, ranging from the 4th to the 15th century. St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain, called the Philokelia, the treasury of watchfulness and keeper of the mind, the mystical school of prayer of the heart, the paradise of the fathers, the deep teachings of Christ, the trumpet which calls back the grace, the instrument itself of deification. So let's look at what these fathers have to say about the noose mind and the heart and the logosmi and the thoughts. Noose then is spiritual vision that enables us to recognize truth as soon as we see it. Noose as a hegemonicon or helm. The noose is also designed to preside over a person as a hegemonicon, the dominant leader or ruler of the personality. <clears throat> intellect is a gift that saves a soul. The purified intellect is a spiritual eye. St. Gregory of Sinai calls the intellect noose a spiritual eye. As does, as does Jesus in Matthew 6, 22 or 23. The physical eye perceives the outward or literal sense of things and from it derives sensory images, the intellect. One purifies and re-established in its pristine state perceives God and from him derives divine images. Instead of a book, the intellect has a spirit. Instead of a pen, it has a mind and tongue. My tongue is a pen, says the psalmist. Psalm 45, 1, and instead of ink, it has light. So plunging the mind into the light, it becomes light. The intellect guided by the spirit inscribes the inner meaning of things in the pure heart of those who listen. Then it grasps the significance of the statement that the faithful shall be taught by God. Isaiah fifty four thirteen, John six forty five, and through the spirit teaches man knowledge. Psalm ninety four ten. So, um, I read to you about the gist of what this is all about. Oh, I apparently annotated this part here. Thoughts are powerful. St. Maximus said, if you do not first sin in thought, you will never sin in deed. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. We read in the book of Proverbs. We create demons within ourselves by welcoming and entertaining evil thoughts. We create hell in ourselves by... Welcoming and entertaining such logosmi, evil thoughts, as an unknown author wrote, it's the weather in your mind that determines the climate of the day. Change your thoughts and you change not only your life, but also your world. You are today what your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts will take you. Someone quipped, you may not be what you think you are, but what you think you are. Another wag said, people who say, I think should always make sure that they think before they speak. Too many people speak without thinking, a Greek proverb says. Do not let the tongue run ahead of your mind. Keep the two connected. So powerful are thoughts that Dr. Walter Alvarez of the Mayo Clinic once said, the sufferings of the mind are more severe than the pains of the body. A Persian proverb says, taking the first step with a good thought and the second step with a good word and the third step with a good deed I enter paradise. So let's just wrap this up. That's Confronting Thoughts, according to the Fathers of the Philokelia by Anthony M. Conaris. And I am Justin William Savoy. I hope you enjoyed the review of these two books. And um, I will be doing more videos very soon. Uh, I hope that you find yourself well this month of December and the year of our Lord 2020. And um, I will be uploading more videos soon. You can reach me at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. That is Savoy, S-U-V-O-Y, Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, 123 at gmail. Dot com. If you found this information helpful or you like this kind of content, I look forward to doing this and also some more um, other kinds of Western literature besides just orthodox spirituality. So stay tuned.
I look forward to providing you with more content. Thank you very much. Bye.